Although the advent of all oral regimens are expected to increase uh, the access of patients to antiviral therapy, and uh, given that antiviral therapy is considered a very pragmatic approach to reduce the risk of end-stage liver disease caused by hepatitis C, including liver cell cancer, we predict that uh, a significant number of patients will still remain at uh, a risk of developing end-stage liver disease, in particular liver cancer. And the reasons are possibly twofold. One is that the co-presence of comorbidities in a significant number of patients who are infected with hepatitis C virus uh, certainly account for an increased risk of developing cancer independently on the presence of the virus. So these patients might get rid of the infection but still are facing the risk of progressing to cancer because of diabetes, overweight, alcohol drinking, heavy smoking and other still unrecognized uh, environmental related risk factors. And the second reason why we predict that a significant number of patients might still remain at risk of developing cancer is that uh, given the high cost of the currently available medications against hepatitis C, we have been forced to start uh, with strategy based upon treatment of patients with more or less liver disease who are those more likely to be in a life-threatening position and therefore merit urgency in our choices of treating. So the strategies of uh, uh, treating first the patients with more advanced liver disease will definitely result in a great number of patients remaining with advanced unreversible fibrosis of the liver, which is an important risk factor for uh, develop uh, over the years uh, end stage complications, including liver cancer. So a real breakthrough would be uh, to be in a position to start treating in all comers uh, with a mild moderate liver disease, possibly the youngest. And this, of course, would be a very expensive strategy, but in the, in the end, it would be the more cost-effective one.